The United States is mining more rare earth elements than ever before, yet America might be losing the global power game because of it. While politicians celebrate domestic mining victories, China quietly controls the one thing that actually matters, the ability to turn rocks into the magnets that power everything from your smartphone to F-35 fighter jets. This isn't just an economic story. It's about the hidden vulnerabilities that could reshape global power in ways most Americans don't realize. To understand this paradox, we need to look at what's actually happening in the rare earth industry today. The Mountain Pass Mine in California, operated by MP Materials, now produces about 45,000 tons of rare earth concentrate annually, making it the world's second largest rare earth mining operation. This represents a remarkable recovery from near-zero American production in the early 2010s, when the facility had closed due to Chinese competition flooding global markets with below-cost materials. The numbers seem impressive on paper. The Department of Defense has committed over $439 million through the Defense Production Act to companies building rare earth capabilities across America. In July 2025, MP Materials secured a transformative multi-billion dollar agreement with the U.S. government, with the Department of Defense becoming a principal shareholder and establishing minimum pricing guarantees nearly double current Chinese market rates. But here's where the story takes an unexpected turn. Despite all this investment and increased mining, America may actually be more vulnerable today than it was a decade ago. The reason lies in a fundamental misunderstanding of where real power exists in the rare earth supply chain. China doesn't just mine rare earths, they've systematically conquered every stage of the value chain. While China controls roughly 60 to 70 percent of global rare earth mining, their real dominance lies elsewhere. They command 85 to 90 percent of processing capacity and over 90 percent of magnet manufacturing worldwide. This isn't an accident. It's the result of a three-decade strategy that most Western analysts completely missed. The transformation of China's rare earth sector reveals sophisticated state planning that puts American industrial policy to shame. Through massive consolidation efforts, China reduced hundreds of independent miners and processors to just two state-owned giants. China Rare Earth Group, controlling southern deposits rich in heavy rare earths, and China Northern Rare Earth Group, controlling northern light rare earth resources. This consolidation eliminated chaotic competition and gave Beijing unprecedented control over global supply chains. The technical complexity of rare earth processing cannot be understated, and this is where America faces its biggest challenge. Heavy rare earth element separation requires over 1,000 solvent extraction stages, demanding specialized metallurgical expertise that has been concentrated in Chinese facilities for decades. Capital requirements exceed $100 million per facility, while Chinese patents and workforce expertise create additional barriers that American companies are just beginning to understand. Here's the disturbing reality. Despite producing 45,000 tons of rare earth concentrate annually, the United States had only one operational refining facility by 2024, producing merely 1,300 tons of neodymium praseodymium metal alloy. This facility represents America's entire domestic processing capacity for these critical materials. Even flagship American companies like MP Materials must still send materials overseas for processing, often to Chinese-controlled facilities. The scale disparity is staggering when you examine the numbers. China produced an estimated 300,000 tons of neodymium iron boron magnets in 2024, representing a doubling from approximately 138,000 tons in 2018. The United States, by contrast, has set a target of producing merely 1,000 tons annually. Individual Chinese companies such as JL Mag and Advanced Technology and Materials each possess capacities that rival the entire non-Chinese world's combined output. This creates a situation where increased American mining without corresponding processing capacity paradoxically increases dependence on Chinese facilities for value-added operations. The Mountain Pass mine still sends significant portions of its rare earth concentrates to China for processing, highlighting how mining expansion can actually deepen strategic vulnerabilities rather than reducing them. China has demonstrated sophisticated use of rare earth controls as instruments of geopolitical power moving far beyond crude embargoes to precise supply chain pressure at multiple points. 
The 2010 restriction of rare earth exports to Japan during territorial disputes caused neodymium prices to spike 750% within three months. More recently, China's export restrictions in 2025 on seven rare earth elements and permanent magnets created immediate disruptions across global manufacturing sectors. The defense implications are particularly concerning. Approximately 80% of U.S. rare earth imports still originate from China, despite years of diversification efforts. Critical weapon systems including F-35 fighter jets, Tomahawk missiles, and Predator drones all depend on Chinese-controlled rare earth materials. A RAND Corporation analysis warns that a supply chain disruption lasting just 90 days could force 78% of U.S. defense contractors to shut down production lines. The automotive industry faces similar challenges, with electric vehicle manufacturers experiencing what industry analysts describe as full panic over rare earth magnet shortages. Each electric vehicle requires 1 to 2 kilograms of neodymium, and global demand for this element alone is expected to triple by 2030 as transportation electrification accelerates. Without domestic processing capabilities, increased U.S. mining cannot address these supply security concerns. China's response to increased Western mining has been to tighten control over processing technologies and finished products rather than raw materials. New regulations extend quota systems to include imported raw materials, meaning that even domestically mined American rare earths become subject to Chinese processing quotas when sent overseas for refinement. This represents an unprecedented level of supply chain management that extends Chinese control over materials regardless of their geographic origin. The economic implications extend throughout American manufacturing. The technology sector faces dependencies as rare earth elements are essential components in semiconductors, advanced electronics, and renewable energy equipment. China's control over 92% of rare earth magnet production creates vulnerabilities that ripple through Western manufacturing sectors. Any changes in Chinese policies can significantly impact entire supply chains, as demonstrated by past restrictions. What makes this situation particularly challenging for American policymakers is that traditional economic tools do not address the core problem. Market forces alone cannot quickly build the specialized expertise infrastructure, and integrated supply chains that China developed over three decades. The capital requirements are enormous, the technical challenges are severe, and the timeframes extend far beyond typical political cycles. International partnerships offer some potential pathways forward. Australia's emerging processing facilities, Japan's recycling technologies, and Malaysia's separation capabilities could form components of an integrated alternative supply chain. However, these efforts remain fragmented and lack the coordinated industrial policy that enabled China's dominance. The rare earth paradox illustrates broader lessons about economic security in an interconnected global economy. Control over strategic resources increasingly depends on technological capabilities, processing expertise, and manufacturing integration rather than simple ownership of raw materials. Mining represents only the first step in a complex value chain where real strategic control lies in the sophisticated industrial capabilities that transform rocks into the high-tech products that define modern life. For American consumers and businesses, this means that despite all the headlines about domestic mining success, the fundamental vulnerabilities remain unaddressed. The path to genuine rare earth security lies not in digging more holes, but in building the sophisticated industrial capabilities that can compete with China's three-decade head start in processing and manufacturing. The question facing America isn't whether we can mine more rare earths. We're already proving that's possible. The question is whether we can develop the industrial ecosystem necessary to turn those raw materials into strategic power. Right now, the answer suggests we're fighting yesterday's battle while China continues to write the rules for tomorrow's game. What do you think? Can America realistically catch up in rare earth processing? Or are we destined to remain suppliers of raw materials to Chinese manufacturers? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's discuss what this means for America's technological future.